Welcome to Lake Cumberland Amateur Radio Association. You can find us at lcara.net, on Facebook, on YouTube, and on Instagram. If you're enjoying the videos we're producing here at Elcara, please help our club out by hitting that subscribe button. Also, give us some feedback on our videos. Click the like button, share with anybody who may find it interesting, and be sure and hit the bell icon to make sure you get notified of the next video release. I'm KY4 BDP Brian for the Lake Cumberland Amateur Radio Association. Today I'm going to pick up a product that I purchased a little while ago, but with the downtime here and for everybody, I thought I'd pick it up and say, well, let's get this thing to work. I have the ICOM 7300 and really enjoy it. It's a wonderful radio. There's many, many of them out there. And I'm always looking for something to value add to that product. And I, I'm on the road usually a lot. Would there be a way to actually remote control this particular rig? And in fact, there is. ICOM does sell a software package, the RS-BA1. They've had a version of this for a while. This is version 2, and it'll work with a number of different transceivers, both HF and VHF, UHF transceivers. Um, and I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to unbox this and show you what's in there. It's not a lot, but we'll do that. And then we'll come back and I'll show you some of the basics to installing the software. Not the whole thing. It's a little bit... The documentation could be better, let's put it that way. Um, but uh, I did get it working, and I'm going to use it tonight on uh, the 10 meter net that we run as a club. Hopefully the audio will be reasonably good. Uh, so we'll see how that goes. And uh, we'll have a little bit of fun with this tonight. So uh, uh, let's go ahead and uh, we'll come back in the next segment and we'll unbox and install and then show you some of the uh, screens and so forth uh, that are available with this software. I'll be right back. Okay, we're back. So what we're going to do is do this very quick unboxing. The uh, the software is, or this particular product is mainly just software. There is a little bit more in here, so let's quickly go through this. We do get two pieces of paper. You get a, a software license agreement, which just about everything comes with these days. And we also get, believe it or not, that much in, in specifications and instructions. And in fact, it even tells you when, in, uh, when in individually installing virtual drivers and when uninstalling and so they've got some elements there that you're probably not going to need but uh, also part of the instructions is go to the website and download the instruction manual so this is not everything now thankfully um, on the actual cd is an instruction manual now you'll always want to go to a website and download the latest instruction manual but at least they do include one and uh, was able to get it to work but even with that manual plus the one that's in the box uh, I had to go online and look at a couple of additional settings uh, for the 7300. And then, I guess because they were feeling really uh, giving that day, uh, I think they actually include this uh, in the box anyway, is a purple or fuchsia colored USB-A to USB, USB-B uh, connector cable. And uh, they recommend you use this cable. They, they fi find that it works fine. You could probably work with other cables as long as they were good quality. And that's what's in the box. Not a whole lot else. That's it. Um, oh, I should say on the CD, uh, three elements of software. There's a driver to virtualize the audio, both for transmit and receive audio. There is server software that you run on a PC that connects to the 7300. And then there's the client aspect of this which we'll show you in the next segment so when i bring you back i'm not going to show you actually installing all of this this is just what comes in the box but i will show you the elements of software on each of the machines the server and on the client side here in my office and then tonight we're going to uh, try to connect to the 10 meter net and uh, see if we can actually uh, get in there and uh, check in. So I'll be right back in the next segment and I'll show you the software at each location, server and client. Okay, so now we're down on the server PC. Now the server PC is down in the basement in this demonstration and it is hooked up to the 7300 utilizing that purple USB cable that I showed you. And what we're looking at here is after you install the software for the uh, 
remote can uh, remote control aspect um, you have to set up the actual server software and the ICOM 7300. So there's uh, the 7300 is what you're actually setting up. You've got to set baud rate. You've got to set up the actual audio as well. So what's the speaker and what's the microphone? Now on this particular device, I actually have the Echolink system running as well. That is certainly not a best practice, but it's the only PC that I've got. And I thought, can I make this work to where Echolink works on one set of USB devices and this works on another? Well, it took a while. And this is where the instructions didn't really help, um, but they can't anticipate doing an install like this, which they wouldn't recommend either. In any event, uh, you set up the 7300. It took a while for me to figure this part out and uh, to ensure that the connection was good. And once this is set up correctly and connected, then when you connect to it from the client side, it'll automatically pick up these settings as well. So you're actually in a really good place once you have this part of the software set up on the server side. So again, this is the server PC component that we're looking at in this uh, particular shot. Um, baud rate. I actually had to go into the 7300 and set the baud rate as well, which meant I had to unlink, unlink the USB from remote. It's actually set to remote. You have to unlink it from remote uh, so that you can get to the 115,000 uh, baud rate. So that had to be done. I actually had to go to a blog post for that and I'll put that down in the description below. So what we're doing now is we're taking it over to the other side. Now there's the ICOM 7300 and what I wanted to show here is that it's not on. Once this is connected through the USB it's able to pick up that the radio is there and I'll be able to power on the 7300 from the client side. So that's what we're going to see in the next segment which is really cool when you think about it. I can be on the road in a hotel the radio is off but I'll be able to connect to it coming through my home router through the firewall connecting to the server software and then hitting the connect button and it powers on the radio and Don is your Elmer. So that's the server PC side. Now we're going to switch over to the client side and show you the software over there. I've installed on the client side the same ICOM remote utility that you see here on your screen. Now what this does for us, this allows us to connect to the server side. Now in this scenario, I'm just connecting to an internal machine uh, downstairs actually in my basement. And you can see right now I have the IP in there, the port that I'm going to use, my user ID, and there's a password associated with that, as well as my internet access. Now because this is a LAN local area network, I'm going to utilize the FTTH, which would be like fiber to the home, but in reality this is going to be a LAN connection. Now, uh, some of the properties that we have, you can see here. I've already set this up on the server side. We saw that in the previous segment. All of these settings are coming from the server PC, which is connected to the 7300. But uh, we can see that those are available to me here. And uh, also, if I go under Options, I can go to Settings and get to these settings, which is the client side and how it's set up. And you'll notice it's also set up for fiber to, fiber to the home, which is technically going to be a LAN connection here. And uh, for all intents and purposes, that's all I'm, going to, all I'm going to go through besides the setup wizard. Now, when you actually run the software, either on the server side or on the client side, you're going to click on one of these tiles. For the server side, you're actually going to install this bottom left-hand side. And when you're uh, installing the client side, which is the side I'm on right now, you'll actually do this top right tile and go through the steps. So again, I'm not going to show you all those steps. A uh, little bit quirky, but it does work. And we're going to click Connect. And you can see it connected to the server component uh, down in the basement, and I am now connected to the PC down there. And what's really cool is through that USB connection, if I go to radio list and I've got the ICOM 7300 down there, I can now connect to that radio and, as we'll see in just a moment, Serial port is good, and we're getting good audio here on the mod side. This is going to be my microphone. Uh, I'm connected, and you can also see uh, properly connected here. Now, what we're going to do next is we're going to bring in, I'm going to move this off screen, and we're going to actually start up the actual remote control software to get ready for the net in the next segment. And the remote control software looks like this. And uh, uh, I'll go through some of these elements here. We've got our bands over here to the right. You've got the ability to transmit. Here's our connect option, which I'll use in just a moment. We also have many of the same buttons that are on the front panel or menu driven on the ICOM 7300. 
you can uh, adjust a scope as well, but I'm not connected, and I'll show you that in just a minute. Uh, I can tune down here with the uh, dial down here at the bottom, just using my mouse wheel. I can go in either direction. You can do your preamps, things like that. So I'm not going to go through all these buttons. Today we're just really going to talk about going through remote control. So I'm going to turn it on. The radio is actually off downstairs. We're going to turn on. And uh, sounds like that uh, Ben has already started the net. Now, you may not be able to hear this, but I can hear him in my headphones. I think he was just doing a preamble there. And you can see that we have the scope turned on here on the right. So 28350 would be the, uh, the frequency. And Ben usually comes in, uh, his radio comes in about four kilocycles low. So I'm actually going to come down to four kilocycles so that he's a little bit more understandable to me. And I'm also going to turn up my headset a little bit here. And let's get the net started. So Ben's doing the preamble. Already put out a CQ. And he'll be asking for uh, those of us listening on 10 meters to come back to him. And hopefully, with my dipole, he'll be able to hear me. Now, we actually tested this a little bit earlier, and he heard me just fine. So we shall see. You can see the displays down here at the bottom. Uh, ALC, standing wave, uh, we're on upper sideband, currently receiving. I need to go through and see if I can knock out this RFI. <laughs> Kilo, Yankee 4, Bravo, Delta, Papa. So the other guys are going through now and putting in their call. And again, hopefully Ben can hear me tonight can almost see a little bit of the signal here on this QRM band. We've got six check-ins so far. So I've just adjusted some preamp and some of the RF level here just to clean it up a little bit on the scope side. And Ben is checking on a couple of call signs he, that came in a little faint and he wasn't sure about them. So he did hear me. It's tough. He's only about four miles from me, but there's also a knob between me. And I'm trying to do an invis setup to make it easier for him. This is KY4BDP. Good evening, Ben, and everybody on the net. I am utilizing remote software tonight, uh, the RSBA1 for the ICOM 7300, uh, also making a video. So uh, you may hear yourself on the net uh, tonight. Uh, you may not. I do want to keep it short uh, for uh, the rest of you, but uh, great to check in. And Ben, hopefully you can hear me tonight. And I'm uh, very, very happy. I can hear you with my headset on. So uh, doing quite well. This is KY4BDP, back to net control. So Ben was able to hear me just fine tonight, and you can see a little bit of his audio just on the left-hand side of this QRM band. So, uh, but that's that is Ben, <laughs> and uh, I won't keep you you guys up for the entire net. But and I don't even think you can hear this side of it. But went really well. I'm I'm pretty jazzed, and uh, what that means is for us, um, we'll go ahead and disconnect here. Um, I tell you what, I'm uh, I'm pretty happy. Now, that's the good part of this. Uh, in the next segment, let's go through some of the pluses and minuses of this particular piece of software, and then we'll wrap it up. So I'll be back in the next segment. On the last segment here, I wanted to mention some of the things I like and then some of the things I'm uh, wishing were a little better. What do I like? Well, I like the fact that on this laptop, which currently is in my office, I can connect to the radio downstairs and run the net from up here, which is more comfortable and has other accoutrements, as you might say, uh, that I like uh, instead of uh, being down in the uh, basement. Uh, that also means that I can take this on the road. It's a slightly different setup. Yes, I have to open up the firewall on my router, but uh, now that I know how to connect things internally, connecting it externally will go a little bit easier. And possibly in the future, I'll show myself on the road connecting to the uh, 7300 uh, while I'm in a hotel, for instance. So you, hopefully uh, we can look forward to that in the future. Um, I like the layout of the screen. It's not the same as the 7300, and that kind of makes sense that it's not. But at the same time, it's enough like the 7300 that you can get around. Um, so I like that aspect of it. And it's a little too busy, but uh, there it is. Now, 
Let me get into uh, an aspect of this that I'm not happy about. This is as wide as this screen goes. Um, I'm used to using things like SDR Play. Uh, for those of you that may not be familiar with that, that's a software-defined radio. And you can resize those windows to your heart's content. There's like five or six or seven different windows. You don't have to run them all. But you can size them to any aspect ratio that you like. This is as big as you can go. If I go to view and to size, I can go normal, which is what I recorded the last segment on, or I can go to large, but that's it. And even if you bring your mouse down here and try to futz with the uh, the corner, uh, top, bottom, anything, this is as large as it goes. And if I reconnect to the radio here and get the spectrum scope, uh, I can make the spectrum scope taller, but I cannot make it any wider. It gives me the arrows to do so, but it doesn't actually allow you. I can make it shorter. I, mean, I thought you could, but I'm guessing not. So that's it. I, I wish it had the ability to fill the screen, uh, especially when uh, a lot of us have larger monitors. I've got the ultra-wide right above my laptop. It'd be nice to be able to fill the screen with the 7300 buttons and so forth that makes it easier to read and access and then put the scope to the right uh, a, a little bit larger so again when you're used to an SDR player or an SDR based uh, receiver for instance this really should have that capability the other thing I'm not really jazzed about is the installation although yes there are instructions um, the instructions that come with the product are not enough there are instructions that are on the CD that will certainly get you, I want to say, with the instructions in the box and the PDF 90% of the way. But I still had to go to a website and somebody else's experience to make an adjustment on the actual ICOM 7300 uh, to allow the scope to work. Otherwise, you're just going to get the button panel. So that's what I, uh, I'm not fond of. Now, after a little bit of a learning curve, uh, as far as setup and so forth, you can get past that. Most of us can get past that. Uh, but as far as uh, the sizing piece, that's definitely something that I'd like to see get better, and hopefully they'll put some time in that. So th I do like it. It's going to give me the opportunity when I travel to utilize my HF rig here at the house. Uh, those are going to be great things to have. Uh, and we may look at other products uh, that can do something similar uh, in uh, future videos. Well, I'll leave it at that. Let's go ahead and turn off the radio here. I'm KY4BDP Brian for the Lake Cumberland Amateur Radio Association. Uh, one uh, other note that I wanted to add, we do uh, have uh, the uh, smile.amazon.com link. Now, this is down in the description. If you're purchasing um, ham radio gear, or if you would just like to help out our club, uh, you can actually go to smile.amazon.com and register uh, our uh, club, Lake Cumberland Amateur Radio Association as a charity. We're a 501c3 and uh, it throws a few nickels our way when you buy things off of Amazon and it doesn't cost you any more. So we'll put that out there and again it's down in the description if you wish to do so. Go ahead and subscribe if you haven't already and uh, we hope to see you down the road. A lot more cool videos uh, coming out this year. 73 everybody.